Sir, you said you had a problem, you right? You do, Bro, I'm an African American. You are a white man telling me to leave a part of the campus. Do you want me to go to Jasmine Rush and show her a photo of you, the dean of students, and let her know that you was harassing me? Am I harassing? Yeah, you are. You're asking me to leave a public place. You're asking you as a white man are asking an African American student to leave a public area at UCLA campus. That's called racial discrimination, and that's a violation of the Civil Rights Act. So, do you do you want to get out of my face now? I mean, I think you're you're present uh, on purpose. What's that? You're being an agitator. On I mean, you're being agitated on purpose. What did Malkin X say about you? That white person that you see calling himself a liberal is the most dangerous thing in the entire Western Hemisphere. He's the most deceitful. He's like a fox. And a fox is almost, is always more dangerous in the forest than the wolf. You can see the wolf coming. You know what he's up to. But the fox will fool you. He comes at you with his mouth shaped in such a way that even though you see his teeth, you think he's smiling and taking for a friend. An agitator? So you think the First Amendment is agitation? No, no one. See, you're drawing lines that aren't there. Okay, because I'm, 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 I'm practicing there. the First Amendment right and you're to record. To that. Right. So I'm recording over here. This guy's recording me. You're not if they can record, I can record. And if you're proudly protesting, you do need to hide behind the mask. To me, you're not, you're not, you're not talking to him. We got, we got people over here. You know what I'm saying? I don't see you talking to them. You're we just. Any, we haven't had any complaints right, about so them being agitated. Right. Well, you're just so, bothering me, bro. We haven't not, had any complaints okay. about them being agitated. I don't know. What we get a complaint. What, we so what's, it, what's an agitator? I don't playing? have to tell you that. Right. Exactly. You can't yeah. even explain yourself. Bro. I don't have to tell you that. You, you're you're trying. You're two you're white men. You're two white men blocking an African American student from walking around on the campus. You're allowed to go wherever you want. Where am I? I'm allowed to go where I want. You seem to be blocking my daughter's stroller from going forward. He seems to have no Palestinian flag or Israel flag. Nope. He's just walking over there black. And you can see, you don't have to be a Jew to be blocked. You just have to think different. I mean, right now, you're following me. You're following me. You're sticking. And he might be an agitator because that's a plastic baby. I mean, my baby is dark white, but not that white. <laughs> Hand in my face. You're putting your arms up over me. You're doing a lot of weird stuff, bro. Sorry, man. Sorry, man. Why are you sorry? I don't know why you're sorry. But officially, if you want to apply their own ideology, I can say they are doing exactly what their great, great, great grandfather was doing back then to other black people. Uh, I can stand anywhere I want. Yeah, that's the good part about being a student. So now you can understand how he managed to infiltrate that gangster camp bro you know there's a nine percent acceptance right here so i had to work pretty hard yeah i got into ucla nine percent acceptance rate so i can go where i want on this campus politely asking you to and i'm outside. politely yeah. asking you to step outside i'm a student here are you in other words ladies and gentlemen they want to break the law and if you start recording they have to tell everybody to put on the mask to hide their identity what is the school a little too integrated for you what you trying to segregate you trying to resegregate the school or something do you know why we're here now? Look at these white liberals, bro. Look at these cosplayers. White liberals, white libs, cosplaying as the oppressed, stopping an African American student. And if you ain't white, you ain't right. So right now, you've assaulted uh, multiple students. You've assaulted multiple community members, including myself. Which, uh, do you have any evidence? Yes, I do. It was, bro it was broadcast on CNN. Fox News and it was broadcast on people over here. They're the ones who ran off and told y'all I was recording right there. These are the ones that ran off. Hey, get him guys, he's recording at the campus. <laughs> oh my God, he has a phone and he's practicing his First Amendment right. Yo, Officer Tatum, can you explain exactly why they're breaking the laws? These people are committing felony crimes and they should be deemed domestic terrorists. What is a domestic terrorist? You can look up the definition and oh, I know it. It's the same as any other terrorist. When you are using physical violence to push a political agenda, you're using intimidation and physical violence and even killing people to push a, a political agenda or ideology, you are considered a terrorist. And if you do it in the United States of America, you're, domestic, you're a domestic terrorist. So how is this not domestic terrorism? Where they're intimidating students, they're using violence against police, they're using violence against students, creating chaos, they're threatening and intimidating people to push what agenda? A political agenda to support Palestinians and Hamas. That, what else do we need to know? And they're not just doing it in, as an individual, they're using a co coordinated effort. And these people are not even students, many of them. So that means there's somebody coordinating an effort to have people who don't even go to school to go and demonstrate on a campus, to take over a campus, to use violence and intimidation to push an agenda. That is domestic terrorism, coordinated. It's an evil world we live in, ladies and gentlemen, because I got the facts. 
have to say these 10 cities that they're building across college campuses are crazy, but are really well organized. And you know I had to look into this to understand who's behind all of this and who's paying all these people. I have to be honest, what I found was not really shocking, but I was surprised by how similar it is to the BLM summer riots of 2020. You see, these encampments are actually really well organized. The students receive the tents from organizers that also supply a bunch of different food like pizzas, rotisserie chicken, coffee. So I looked into who these organizers actually are and there are three prominent groups. Students for Justice in Palestine, there's Within Our Lifetime, and then there's Jewish Voices for Peace. And these groups are actually led and organized by another organization called U.S. Campaign for Palestinian Rights. And just guess how much these fellows are paid. They get $7,800 if they work eight hours a week on some kind of Palestinian campaign. Makes you rethink what the hell you're doing with your life. Are you sure? And across these campuses, we've seen these fellows speak out at various events. Nita Lafi, Craig Morton, Malik Afina. So where the hell does USCPR even get this money to pay these fellows that much money? And who funds Students for Justice in Palestine and these other organizations? Here's where it really gets interesting. Almost all of their funding comes from rich, elite investors such as George Soros, Howard Horowitz and members of the Rockefeller family. And isn't that ironic on its own? You see, George Soros's Open Society Foundation, along with Rockefeller's Brother Fund, gave $700,000 to these organizations. And we know now that the Open Society Foundation isn't run by George Soros anymore. It's actually run by his brother, Alex Soros, and his partners, Huma Abedin, with direct ties to the Muslim Brotherhood. As they say, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Now, the Open Society Foundation also funneled $20 million into the Tide Foundation. And the Tide Foundation takes this money and disperses it across all of these organizations across the U.S. They funnel money into Westpac, which is an organization that is led by Howard Horwitz. And Westpac is actually the fiscal sponsor for Within Our Lifetime. And guess what? All of these organizations have direct ties to the 2020 Summer Love Riots. So the question I have to ask is why? Why now? Why again in the summer before a presidential election? And read the comment below. I'm pro-Palestine, but this is weird. Why is George Sauer doing this? What is his motive? Is it true that he's funding this? Bruh. Uh, you were enemies to God. You were in a whole different kingdom than God. And God had chosen. Jesus. Jesus. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, another attack on Christianity. But Jesus was there, blocking that gun. And now we can pray for him for a better life, for both of us. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, we have an issue with weak men. And weak men are the most dangerous men if you want to compare them to alpha men. <laughs> And are we promoting this? No, this gets silenced, but this gets promoted. I got misgendered at work on Wednesday um, by someone that has been corrected before and it just hit me hard. I was three hours into my um, long shift. I don't even remember how long it was, maybe eight hours, my eight hour shift. Um, and I immediately was like, no, I need to leave. So I left, I went home. Um, and since then I have been spiraling, which is not a fun thing to be dealing with when you are a broke person living in New York City and need to pay rent. So I'm getting ready to go to work right now, go to my other job. Um, I called out last night and I'm having to talk myself into showing up today. And I, to all of my trans friends, to all of my trans followers, to any trans person that stumbles upon this video, I love you so much. I love you so, so much. I know how much this hurts. Um, I think for a second I got too comfortable and I forgot how much this hurts me. And I lost my usual coping skills. And so that's what I'm trying to work on now. I thankfully have people in my corner that are helping, but um, it's hard to get help when your instinct is to cut everyone off and refuse help. 
As a kid, I never hoped I can cut people off out of my life to still have a living mom. No, I just wanted to be invited near their mom so I can at least have a feeling of how it is to still have a mom. But if you want to tell me I'm not a psychologist, I'm terrified. I want to run away from it. I want to do anything but this. And so what a kid's circuit is, I feel, let's say it's this, I feel less than, or it could be, I feel jealous. I feel sad. I feel disappointed. And what gets layered next to that in the circuit is my parents' fear, my parents' avoidance. Those things get put together. The irony is when you make happiness a goal of childhood, you actually set a kid up for an adulthood of anxiety because they have a range of emotions that they've encoded as wrong and fearful. And to me, anxiety actually isn't a feeling. It's the experience of wanting to run away from a feeling. Uh, and if Avoiding you, it. Yeah. It is. And you can't really run away from a feeling inside your body. That's what anxiety is. You're like, wait, this is not going to win. And so to me, the idea of we want to help kids become resilient, resilience over happiness. Mm -hmm. And resilience comes from being able to tolerate and sit with the widest range of emotions, not constrict ourselves. And sadly, ladies and gentlemen, they would never accept such a message. Right now, I'm at a march honoring the Holocaust. And right behind me is a Palestinian protest when we are honoring the lives of six million murdered Jews and five million other non-Jews. They're chanting free Palestine over there. So you have all these people funneling into the country, and so you have an erosion of confidence in our entire system because people are very aware of that, and the yes. more people are let out of jail after they commit violent crimes, yes. the more people are aware of that. If you looked at the whole picture, all the things that are in play right now, particularly like with the open borders and giving people plane tickets and flying them to all these different cities, like if I was going to try to destroy the country, that's how I would do it. If I was going to try to destroy the country, I would radicalize the kids. I would give them the, the stupidest ideas and, and run them in their head. Boys can be girls. Girls can be boys. Uh, boys can compete against girls in sports if they think they're a girl. Um, uh, queers for Palestine, you know, uh, the death to the Jews, yell it out mm -hmm. uh, unironically mm -hmm. on campuses. Yeah. And to have the presidents of those colleges and universities defend it, which was wild. Completely. With cameras on them. Yeah. <laughs> like, it shows how scared doors. they are. I think it also shows how they live in a bubble. And I don't think they interact with the real world. Mm. And I think when they did, the shock was <laughs> probably... True. It was, it was probably horrifying yeah. to just to realize how most people feel about what they said. Yeah. I think we're sending our kids to cult camps. Mm. That's what I think. I think they get indoctrinated into this. They don't all. Some of them skate through. Some of them are wise. Some of them realize this is crazy. Right. Can't wait to get out of here yeah. and get my degree and then go to work. But some of them just get locked in and then it becomes their identity. And yeah. it, it's... Dangerous. Any kid that didn't get the acknowledgement at home and they can just scream something and feel part of a group are going to agree with it. Also any kid that has always the feeling of love and they keep getting anxiety and they want to run away from something is never going to challenge any other kids because they have anxiety. Yeah right. Self defense class. You'll have some coverage. Oh, I'm, I'm actually on my way out, so. I'm actually on my way out. What was that? Why not? Did it show that? Skipper, no for unstrained self defense training. Okay. Oh, you touched your phone? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, you're not sorry, bro. You touched my phone. Oh, the Daily Bruin. These people have been, uh, like, the Daily Bruin has covered SJP, like, in a bad way. And she has the audacity to to be in front of me while I'm fucking like recording this shit. What the fuck? <laughs> this is actually fucked up. I hate white people. <laughs> Swear to God, if they write about me, I'm calling it racist because <laughs> I told you they're a ninja because they can be racist by calling you a racist. I keep hearing that men need to regulate their emotion and I'm like, what about the lady that forgot to throw her eyes? Because one thing I do know, babies learn way more from your reaction than your word and you would be surprised. For the last several years and want to join together with the students from the university in their hunger strike. What? 
Bro, what are you talking about, man? So their demands are disclose of investment, divestment from Israel, academic and culture boycott of institution complicit in Israel apartheid and genocide, create partnership with Palestine institution, creation of center for Palestine studies, scholarship for displaced Gazans. What? Amnesty for all... St oh, no, 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 no. Right to jail. That is not a hate crime. Hit by hate when a man leaves tire marks all over a pride flag. But that is a hate crime. The police won't do a fucking thing, so we need to stand up for ourselves. And that's what we're doing right now. This man needs to leave immediately. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is not a hate crime. So he that was happening at the University of Amsterdam, and they decided to do something about it later. Seven of October is the bloody beginning of it. You're gonna have plenty of seven October's coming, plenty of it, and the next seven October is gonna be to kick your ass out. We're not going anywhere. You see, you see, you see. Well, we already know what happened on that day, but a bunch of people don't even want to accept it. But he's saying that it's going to happen. So when it happens, don't look at me surprised like you didn't know what's going to happen, because you knew what might happen. Don't get me wrong, my cosa get a bong, put the fire na mi blonde, kush hash purple skunk, kriyo yo kolumbichi jam jam, dur loketa verdeta welcome.